Had a humdinger of a storm a few days ago. Took my Uzoli weather station and smashed it to smithereens, as they say, when a very large tree branch came down on it. I uh, needed to replace it. So I'm using the FT0367 right here. I'm going to talk about it coming up. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and as I mentioned there, we had a, a humdinger of a storm here a little while back, and a large tree branch came down off of another tree, and it just literally crushed the weather station I had mounted on the post. So, uh, we did another one, got this one from Uzoli, and it's model FT0367, it's a little bit of an upgraded model uh, from what I had before. So, it needs to be assembled. And it, rather than me going through the whole thing of putting this one together, which is identical to the one that got smashed as far as the sending unit, here's the video from when I put that one together. So here we are. As it comes, packed like this. You've got the, the manual here. This is the display console. And then we have the various parts and pieces here, which we'll start taking out. Power adapter, knew about that. Mounts. The unit itself. And I will note here, this does take batteries. Okay, and I'm going to note here, this does take batteries. This does have a solar panel right here, and that powers the unit when it is out in the sun. But at nighttime, you have no power. So this does require AAA batteries, which go in this little compartment right here, which I'll fetch some batteries here pretty soon. This is the rain collection cup. And, well, I got my fan blowing behind me, and it's actually turning the wind vane there a little bit. And this here, of course, is your wind direction. First, you got a bag of screws, bag of bolts. Then we have a mounting pole. And we have cardboard. We'll get rid of that and get some things here set up a little bit. Okay, one of the first things they're going to do here is put the batteries in it. Before I put the pole on it, just make it a little bit easier, although you can absolutely get to this battery door with the pole on it and you want to make sure you put them in there in the right direction they recommend lithium batteries I don't have any so I'm using Alkaline where I am mounting this it won't be hard for me to get to them if I need to change the batteries and it says in the thing of batteries are should last one to two years so I said they are mostly for backup power because the solar panel will give you the power otherwise. There's a gasket on here. On the, I can't really show it because it's black on black and it's very tiny. There's a little rubber gasket in there to keep this watertight. So you want to make sure you get your door in there correctly. Yeah, it's just a matter of putting that one little screw back in. Now for the mounting pole. This just slips into a hole in the bottom. There's a slot at each end. I don't think it makes any difference which way you go, but you have to give a little bit of a wrap to get it in there all the way. Okay, on one side of this is a little boss where the nut will set. The little nut and bolt here, so you want to put the bolt in on the flat side. And then put the nut on the side where it will become captive once you start tightening that screw up. Oh, 
Okay, so now we got pole on it. Looks like this. Okay, on the end of your unit, where you look where the weather or the wind direction vane is, and I know this will not show up on camera, but there are directions, wind or compass directions. For example, right here where I'm pointing, that's south. So obviously the other side would be north. I got east facing me, and west would be on that direction. Of course, I'm holding this upside down. But you want to orient this with those compass directions facing the right direction. So if you don't know what direction is what, uh, get a compass. You put a compass app on your phone so you know which way is which. Sun comes up in the east, goes down in the west. That'll also give you a clue. In my particular application, I'm going to mount this on the end of our little gazebo where my wife's swing is. It's not an ideal location because it is blocked pretty much on one side by the house. But it is a convenient place for me to be able to get to the batteries, uh, to be able to do maintenance with the rain gauge, which you need to take off and clean. This little thing here every three months or so. So you want to put it someplace where it's accessible. Ideal place would be on top of the shop here up on the end of the peak, but then I'd need a 30-foot extension ladder every time I wanted to go get to it. That's all there is on assembly on that. Uh, this here is a mount for flat surface. If you're putting it on a flat surface, I'm going to be putting it on a vertical surface, so I'm going to be using it this way. Or, if you're going to put it on a pole, there's another half to this. You put, you put the two halves together, you can put it around a pole and mount it on a pole, and they, they do give you enough bolts for that. Since I am putting it up this direction here, I will be mounting it. Make sure I get it set in there the right way. Uh, south that way. It's just a matter of pushing this little guy on there. And you'll have the same thing with the little nut and bolt. And there's a little recess right there to put the nut into. If you drop it. Snug fit. Screw go in the back side. You have a tight fit there. There it goes. Okay, so this will be mounted. Turn it this way so you can see it. It'll be mounted like this with this against the gable of the gazebo. And I'm going to have to cut a block of wood to space it out a little bit to get it around the drip edge. But my next activity will be to mount it. Okay, so say it wasn't that tough, and setup is basically exactly the same. The only difference is this time I decided I would connect it to our Wi-Fi, and I went through the whole thing, and I was going to show that of how it's done. The, the book that comes with it is very detailed on how to do it, and I'm, I use Weather Underground rather than Weather Cloud, but you could use your Weather Home or whatever they call that. But I use Weather Underground. Um, and the setup was not that hard. The problem is trying to show that reveals so much personal information it even actually pinpoints on a map the exact location of the weather station. I don't need everybody knowing that because it's also where we live. So I, I don't need a bunch of people dropping by to look at the weather station or any other kind of weird thing or messing with the shop or any of that. So got to keep some security there. I was trying to figure out a way to block out all that stuff and passwords and addresses and it just was not practical to do. By the time you got through trying to block all that stuff up in the video, it wouldn't have made any sense anyway. You do not have to use Wi-Fi. I just decided to uh, do it this time. I did not do it before because I didn't really think we needed it. But if I'm on vacation or maybe up at camp or something and I want to see what the Weather's doing here, I could look at it on my phone real easy. It's kind of neat. You 
let's say you uh, live in New York and you decide to go to LA and you want to know what the temperature is in January back at home while you're sitting on the beach in the sun, you can look. So that's kind of neat. Uh, the setup on this, uh, it's also in the book for setting your date and time. It's very, very simple. It's just a little button you touch. You don't have to push it. You just touch it. It's capacitance. Uh, pretty much just like the other one. And other than this, the display being just a little different, all the setup was exactly the same. This does have a lot of alarm functions. Um, I do not use those for the outdoor weather station. I have uh, another Uzzoli weather station right here that monitors temperatures in three of our greenhouses, plus in the shop here. And it, it works very, very well. And it, one of them really has to stretch because it's almost 400 feet to that far greenhouse from here. And it, it picks it up just fine. And I'm able to monitor the temperature. I can Wi-Fi that too, I just haven't done it. I had no real reason to yet. So what do I think of this brand? I, I like it. I Like I said, we had the other one that got damaged and I use this sending unit here to replace it. Uh, a little plus, the receiving unit from the old one also works with the same unit. It's just that now I'll be able to have those in two different places, I guess. Uh, I was a little bit surprised that it was on the sa exactly the same channel, but once I hooked up this one out here, I was in here messing with this and getting this one all set up. Happened to go in the house, I looked at our uh, station screen, and it lit up with all the data from that one right there. So, and they match. It even measured the little bit of rainfall that we had while I was putting it up. Yeah, two tenths of an inch. Of course, it only rained while I was out there installing it, but... Not hard, but enough to get me a little wet. Okay, I guess one thing I need to mention, uh, something that came up as a comment with uh, the previous video I did on this was, well, it doesn't keep the batteries charged. Well, no, it doesn't because it does not charge the batteries. Uh, there's no reason to use NICADs or lithium-ion in there. Uh, if you're going to have it out where it's very, very cold in wintertime, you know, it gets down like zero and below, you'll want to use lithium batteries, but not necessarily the lithium-ion because the solar panel that is on that unit is only access auxiliary power and runs it during the day when the sun's shining. Otherwise it relies on the internal batteries. And the batteries last a long time, almost a year um, of life of batteries on that. It's three AAAs. Now the batteries that go into this unit right here, or I should say those are three AA's out there, three AAA's on the uh, display unit here, and that's just to back up for when power goes out so you don't lose your settings. And those should probably be changed every one to two years or whatever. And a little secret there is if you leave it plugged into power, when you change the batteries, you won't lose your settings. If you unplug the power and then take the batteries out, you're going to put all the settings back in again. So, kind of a little something to keep in mind there. Kind of a backup plan. So overall, I like this. Uh, we use it in the house console. We have it, uh, well, I'm going to replace the unit in our sunroom with this one now and put the other one somewhere else in the house, maybe up in the bedroom or something. It's nice to get up in the morning and just be able to look at that and know what the temperature is, what the dew point is, um, humidity, a little bit of a forecast, any rain we had, how much accumulated, and if it's raining at the time, you can actually get a rate, rainfall rate. So that's kind of a neat thing too. So if you'd like to get one of these, I got this on Amazon. Um, there'll be a link in the description, and if you should decide to purchase one, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I'll get a little bit of a commission on that. does not affect your cost whatsoever, but it kind of helps pay for things around here a little bit. And that kind of good stuff. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the shop. Zoli Weather Station. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.